This is a map of all the knowledge in a company created by GPT-4. Each dot is an email, a message, or a Google Doc. GPT-4 read everything and guessed the project being talked about and the links between them. It was also able to derive the true hierarchy of the company, the real role of each person based on their communication and actual work. See, GPT-4 is not just a chatbot that can write poetry or generate an email for you. It's a reasoning engine. It can write code, interact with websites, learn to play Minecraft, and all of the through a simple chat box. Surprisingly, it all stems from a piece of software we've been using for years, the autocomplete on your phone. In 2015, Sam, Elon, and a few others got together the small sum of $1 billion and created OpenAI. They then spent the next few years doing what you would expect a bunch of researchers with a billion dollars do, making robot hands and playing Dota? But somewhere in that pile of cash was Bob, probably just an intern experimenting with the autocomplete on his phone. Little did he know, this simple project would turn into one of the biggest technology breakthroughs of the century. At the time, the autocomplete used a probability model. To create one, you start with a piece of text. For example, in this sentence, you would take each word and look at what usually comes after it. The word what is followed by it two thirds of the time and by you one third of the time. The word it usually has is or that. If we do that for all the words, we can then make an educated guess for what the next word in the sentence should be. You can even make new sentences by following the graph. What you make it is what it is. That's basically what's happening when you press the autocomplete button a bunch of time on your keyboard. Except your keyboard has a way bigger tree of probability that was created based on a lot more text. This is fun, but what comes out is nonsense. Which makes sense, because when you think of a sentence, you don't think of the previous word only, you think of the whole sentence. So instead of looking at a single word to make our guess, let's look at the past two or three words. It can lead to is and that, but what it always leads to is, and make it always leads to that. The more words we look at, the better our guesses get, but also the more complicated it becomes to pick the right guess. Like this sentence, her shoe was made of blank. If you just look at made of, the most likely next word should be still. But because of shoe, all of a sudden still becomes very unlikely. So we end up having to define patterns dynamically, like shoe plus something plus made of is leather, but bar plus something plus made of would be still. At this point, Bob's starting to sweat. This is getting too complicated. I can't define all these patterns manually. I need some sort of pattern detection algorithm. As he said that, Ilya was passing by taking a break from all the dot I was playing, probably. Pattern matching, you said? That's exactly what we've been working on with the neural networks. Our robot hand, the first thing it does is identify the letters on the cube from a picture of them. Let me explain. Imagine you kidnap a rat, put it in a box with a button. You want to train the rat to identify the letter I. At first, Remy is going to press the button randomly, but every time he gets it wrong, you zap him, and every time he gets it right, you give him a cookie. See, he has no idea what the fuck is going on, but over time, he'll associate the drawing of a line with getting treats. That's easy for a rat, cause I is just a line, but for example, N would be three lines. That's too complicated for Remy. So let's bring in more rats and show them only a slice of the image. Each rat can focus on recognizing a line in their own slice. But wait, if I asked top rat and bottom rat if this is an N, they would say yes, and from their point of view, they would be right. So let's bring in Captain Rat. This guy looks at the answer of the other rats and gives me the final answer. Captain Rat can learn patterns just like Remy. So if we want to identify an H, we can add a new captain rat. He'll be looking for different answers from the other rats. You get the idea. If you add more rats, each one has less to look at and they get better at looking for a specific shape. Then we can add a captain rat for each letter we want to recognize. And ta-da, that's what a neural network is. It's just a bunch of rats getting zapped. You could even identify more complex shapes by adding more layers of rats. Here, for example, each layer of rat adds a level of understanding of the patterns that make up a cat. Well, in reality, we don't know Know what each layer and neuron does. The rats just figured themselves out based on the treats and zap we gave them. Which also means instead of teaching them to find patterns in images, we can teach them to find patterns in sentences. To do that, we can train the rats to tell us how related two words are. Then we can ask the rat to compare each word to all the other words in the sentence. For example, shoe and maid are very related, maid and her, not so much. That way, each layer of rat will be able to develop a deeper and deeper understanding of the structure of a sentence. Which is great, but it doesn't help with the autocomplete. We still need a way to guess the next word. To do that, OpenAI used the only thing better than a neural network. That's two neural networks. The second one does the actual autocompleting, but it has the understanding of language from the first one. Sounds easy, right? Well. Not really. This made Bob sweat even more. Neural networks, the rats, they're trained to say yes or no. They're not trained to write words. So what are we supposed to do? Show them every single word that exists and ask them if it's the one they want to autocomplete? Oh.
Oh yeah, no yeah, that's exactly what they did. But the thing is, English has hundreds of thousands of words, and even more if you add other languages. That would take way too much computing power for every autocomplete. We could also show the rats letters one by one, but they would have to not only figure out the structure of a sentence, but the concept of a word itself. So the idea is to strike a good balance between not showing the rats too many options, but also not restricting the possible words they can write. To do that, let's look at all the data we have. All the books, all the tweets, all the reddits. We'll keep the top 80% most used. Surprisingly, that's only 1000 words. We still want to be able to write the other 20%. So we extract common groups of letters that we can use as Lego bricks. So the rats can write thinking using th, in, and king. All three pieces can also be reused to create other words. OpenAI landed on about 50,000 pieces of words. They call them tokens. This collection of possible tokens is also how you turn words into numbers because computers and neural networks only understand numbers. So when you train your rat, you actually first have to turn all your words into their equivalent numbers. And then to do the autocomplete, you show the rat every possible token, all 50,000 of them, and they tell you yes or no for each one. Well, actually, they're a little more indecisive than that. They give you a percentage. 100% means they really think this token should go next, but they can give you any percentage. Which is great because it means you can have several possible autocomplete answers, just like on your keyboard. Also, fun side note, ChatGPT's data contains a lot of Reddit, and some Reddit users posted so frequently that they ended up having a token dedicated for their username. Anyway, now we have a system that can understand language and guess the next best piece of word. But it would be kind of weird to just use that piece of word for our autocomplete. So we can build a small machine that takes what comes out of the neural network, adds it back to the original sentence, and send it through again until we have a full word. And heck, why stop at one word? Let's keep going. Nothing is stopping you from generating more words and more sentences. Exactly like what you might have seen on ChatGPT. Wait a minute. You're telling me that ChatGPT is literally just an autocomplete that generates more than one word. That makes no sense, because if it was the case, when I type something like I like, it would autocomplete something like cheese, and not whatever that is. Indeed, we are missing the crucial ingredient that makes ChatGPT great. Human feedback. Once the rats are trained to do just the autocomplete, OpenAI makes them go through a summer camp in the military where they basically learn to obey orders rather than autocompleting. Before that summer camp, the neural network created a deep understanding of language, right? We can turn that into actual answers just by making the rats train a little bit more, but with humans that reward answers instead of autocomplete. And that's it. It sounds crazy that a simple concept like this could turn into such a powerful reasoning engine. Yet here we are. What really makes this solution so powerful is these two things. One, the neural networks are built in such a way that you can stack them on top of each other as many times as you want. Which means the only limit to this design is how powerful your computer is. So the real secret is this. Our computers got better, specifically GPUs. This idea of stacking networks is from 2017, that's pretty old. In fact, the idea of neural networks is from the 60s, but it's just recently that we've had computers fast enough to reliably apply them at scale. Now don't get me wrong, it's also because of the insane minds at OpenAI. Let's not forget about our boy Bob. All right, now that you know all this, go ask ChatGPT or to subscribe to my channel. You won't believe the answer.